Sugar man, won't you have Forget Argo, Les Mis and all the rest. The most awarded movie in the world in the past 12 months is Searching for Sugar Man. If ever there is an air of intrigue and mystery around a pop artist, it is around the artist known as Rodriguez. There were no concrete cold facts about the artist known as Rodriguez, any music colleges, detectives out there. And that, that's the line that changed everything. The documentary has won 30 top international awards, including an Oscar, and it's all about this man, a musician named Rodriguez. The only writer that, that I had heard of of that time period was maybe Bob Dylan that was writing that well. And the Oscar goes to Searching for Sugar Man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks to the Academy. Very, very kind. Uh, thanks to one of the greatest singers ever, uh, Rodriguez. Um, well, how did you feel when the movie won an Oscar? I know it's won so many awards around the world, but when it won the Oscar, what was your gut feeling? Well, the thing is, uh, I, um, I, I actually was sleeping when I didn't have... <laughs> yeah, I don't have TV service, so I, you know... And I told them, I had just... Re uh, I came back from South Africa, so I, I was really crashed. And I, I didn't want to extend myself too much, because... I'm a solid 70, you know, and I got to take it easy, you know, so, uh, yeah, so. But so it, was, it wasn't a wild night of party? No, no, it wasn't, <laughs> no, and, no, but it, it was great that it won, and it's also won awards in Moscow mm -hmm. and Melbourne, and. It's the whole South African thing to, to mm -hmm. discover that you had this enormous fan base in South Africa and that you'd sold all those albums. Yeah. Um, what effect has that had on you? Well, I signed one today that was out, issued out in the 70s, and so, yeah, that's interesting, and to see the product as well. So I, I've, uh, <clears throat> and, and we're tracing it down as well as, as how exactly when it arrived here in Australia. But it's all good. We just finished doing South Africa. We did nine shows there, forty-five thousand people. We wow. did uh, the UK prior to that, uh, twelve shows there. So we're, we're, you know, we're on the road with this music side too. The film is separate for me. His is a magical story. A Detroit musician released two amazing albums which flopped in the United States. The beautiful inspiration for your songs, your beautiful songs. Thank Wait, you. What, what was it? Where, what were you doing? Where did these songs come from? Oh, for you? geez, just the everyday things. Yeah. I think. Every, uh, personal relationships. Uh, uh, social uh, issues, uh, the realism of the cities. What's your favourite song from, from Rodriguez? Uh, my favourite song is probably... Uh, mm, there's so many. There's a, there's a couple of songs which... I'm not even sure that Rodriguez is playing on this tour. There's one called Cause. It's one of the saddest songs. That, I'm laughing, but it's one of the saddest songs that... Uh, I've ever heard, and it's a very simple song. Hang on, I want to play this. Hang on. Okay, listen to these words. Because I lost my job two weeks before Christmas. Oh, man. I wrote that real quick because we, we had to, I was in, in England and we were, you know, we had this album we were doing so could, and so uh, I needed that song so we just... Uh, was it about in. someone you knew or...? Of course, no, it was just, uh, it's just different fragments of, uh, of things, you know, mm -hmm. of, of situations, you know, mm -hmm. like that. So I thought I'd put it all in one kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I... Sugar Man? Sugar Man is a descriptive song, not a prescriptive song. <laughs> Uh, get good. your, Angela, get your hugs, <laughs> stay off of drugs, <laughs> stay smart, don't stack, you know. I say that during the shows because I, I don't want many to misinterpret. It's a descriptive song. I'm, I'm doing a Polaroid of, time, of something, you know, an idea. And I can't help thinking, you know, if people like Bruce Springsteen, who's also here in Australia, you know, if North American artists like Springsteen had heard Mm. This marvellous Detroit musician like Rodriguez, in the same way that we did down here. Mm. I wonder what an influence he would have been on homegrown musicians in the United States. When you thought 
the album mm. hadn't been a success. Yeah. Did you give up? Uh, well, not music, just uh, being trying to get into the, the you know, scene, you know, and so like that. It's, uh, but it was, uh, but uh, in, in retrospect, in rock and roll, there's a lot of disappointment, uh, rejection, and criticism. And you know, no matter whether you're a musician or an artist or a playwright or a, an author, if you if you create something great, a timeless piece of work, people will eventually discover it. You know, and it gives us great joy now to see um, Rodriguez on those American TV shows and people filling in the gaps. Uh, although it feels like our secret's been let out as well. You know, we had, at one point we had Rodriguez all, all to ourselves. So. He returned to his job as a demolition man, while unbeknownst to him, his music inspired a generation on the other side of the world. Any revolution needs an anthem. And in South Africa, Cold Fact was the album that gave people permission to free their minds and to start thinking differently. And we found out that he committed suicide. The story differs a lot, and a lot of people have different versions of the story. He set himself a light on stage. He reached down and pulled up a gun and pulled the trigger. I thought it would make a good story, find out how Rodriguez died. Well, these wild rumours that had gone around that oh. you'd taken your own oh, life, yeah, yes, yeah. where do you think they came from? I don't know, but uh, again, I, I didn't have anything to do with that. And the, for South Africa, I didn't know about that. Mm. Were you a bit surprised when they told oh, you? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I did, yeah. But uh, my fan base in, in, in South Africa are Afrikaans, and they were uh, a lot of soldiers in my audience, and they s defended the country in um, Angola and, and Namibia and uh, on the borders there, and so that's who I am told initially started this. take yourself to one side and look at how amazing this whole story is? Um, well, as I said, I have that perspective now. I'm a solid 70, so I do have that. Uh, I, I can remember uh, vividly all these uh, decades of what, uh, events. So yeah, it's, it's the hindsight that we talk about. I've reached that point. And each age has its own rewards, you know? But a fact not revealed in the documentary is there was another place his music found a home. Australia. I think he went five times platinum for Cold Fact. And I think there's a following in New Zealand, there's probably a small following in Zimbabwe and France. And it's definitely not just a South African phenomenon. I bought Cold Fact in 1976 and yeah, it was like right into, a, you know, I was a convert right from the beginning. I remember thinking, you know, this is, this is an album that will last the ages and, and here it is. But from a personal point of view, we've always found Rodriguez extremely uh, self-deprecating, humble musician. Um, and having spent uh, just a couple of days now with him in rehearsal for the tour, uh, he's, he's just the same, you know, even though at last the Northern Hemisphere is playing a giant game of catch-up. Is it a wild ride at this point in time? Oh yeah, very, a lot of turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of turbulence. Yeah. And now, all these decades later, Rodriguez is back for another Australian tour and playing in his band are Brian Ritchie from the Violent Femmes, Jack Howard from Hunters and Collectors and three members of Midnight Oil. See, Rodriguez and the Oils go way back, I think back to the late 70s actually. We did a little tour uh, culminating I think in the Tantalorn Festival, uh -huh. for those of us old enough to remember that. <laughs> it's about 1981. And what's it like for you to be playing tonight with the break, oh, with the guys geez, from oh, the Oils? Oh geez, it's, it's, it's a... And we're going to do, maybe do a cover of uh, one of the oil songs. So Which one? I, uh, well, I'll let them come and see, hear that. Oh, will know? we be? We'll be there, but <laughs> let me in on a secret. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, but we, we're rehearsing it and we're seeing, making decisions in the set. But it should be great. You are getting all the royalties you deserve now, I presume? I have, since this film uh, and, and uh, Light in the Attic, my, the label I'm on yep. pres presently, and the thing is, uh, um, yeah, I'm getting more direct uh, contacts and I hope that's all resolved at some point but right now I'm in the middle, middle of a tour and, uh, and enjoying the sights, you know. 
world. And I call Sydney the capital of the world. And you don't have to force me to say that, but <laughs> I feel that way. And so, yeah, I have a, it's, Australia is a, has a special place, you know. Oh, well, for someone coming from Detroit, one of the music capitals of the oh. world, that is a really oh, well, wonderful thing for you to say. Well, I mean it. It's, it's real. It's, yeah. It didn't work out, but don't ever doubt how I felt about you. It is, without a doubt, one of the most incredible stories in rock and roll. And while the search for Sugar Man might be over, now that the rest of the world has found him, the musical story can continue. Sugar man, won't you hurry? Cause I'm tired of these scenes. For a blue card, won't you bring back?